Welcome to Tone Talks. 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 So this is Antonio Moore coming to you for a discussion about the coronavirus and how to prepare and different things you need to have in your possession. If you haven't ordered it, order these things, you probably need to order them now. I think for uh, some people, you know, they don't understand how serious this is. One of the, I'm go through several articles. One of the articles talks about the complacency we're seeing amongst the general population. While there isn't time, uh, this isn't a time to panic. This is a time to get very serious, particularly if you have a, a family. Um, we know that the, the, the coronavirus isn't affecting children under nine, the way it is adults, particularly those adults with weak immune systems and older people. But at the same time, I think that we all have a responsibility here to both be informed and also be prepared because it isn't just the virus, it's the impact the virus might have on different things. I mean, just this morning, I think, uh, let me read the tweet that just came out from uh, Chris Hayes. Again, I think one of the uh, responsibilities we have is to make sure that the sources we use are reputable. Um, one of the articles that I'm going to share in a second was about how African descent people have some kind of higher uh, propensity to, to defend against the virus. And that's not necessarily true. And the source was bad. So watch what you're sharing. Um, the, the tweet that just came out from Chris Hayes of MSNBC is Japan just closed, and it's on my Twitter, Japan just closed schools for a month. If you're a parent with school aged children, think for a second how massively disruptive this would be. So, you know, we talk about uh, black America and ADOS and the lack of wealth and f middle family worth $1,700. I think in moments of emergency, you really see that show up from a lack of reserve of, of monies to a lack of reserve of everything from medicine to, you know, paper goods like toilet tissue and napkins to actually when you move up to the higher end stuff like an N95 mask, which I'll show you in a second or even a solar charged uh, charger. I just think that we, 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 you know, reserve waters, reserve foods, which I'll go over in a second. You don't see those things because we're living on that $1,700 middle family. And then as a result, when these emergencies happen, you really see it show up in our families and it doesn't matter. You gotta be prepared. And I, I you know, it's time to start looking at what th those things you can control from, if you can't get the N95 mask getting these kind of masks so you can actually be able to have them on your face. I'll talk about what, how, how much they protect Lysol and Clorox wipes. We need to get into the discussion. Please use the super chat. I got 400 people in the box already. Um, we're looking to have a powerful discussion about the coronavirus and what's going on so that we can be informed. Um, let's start off with this article here and um, different points. I'll p try to pull up where you can actually see the article so that you can go yourself and either read along or pull it up later. And this is the first article. What is, it's on the Guardian. What is coronavirus and what should I do if I have symptoms? I'm gonna read through some of this. Again, I have about eight or nine articles that I'm gonna go through. I'm use the super chat to jump over and have a discussion, super chat being YouTube. Please support this channel and support my Patreon. My Patreon is Tone Talks. Uh, my Cash App is Tone Talks as well, but my Patreon is Tone Talks. Please support my Patreon, uh, support this channel, share this video. Um, I'm in the chat. I got people all across the country. And Angela Hill, morning to you as well. Uh, please subscribe, share this video. Thank you for my mods that are in there early. And, you know, it's, it's 8 o'clock on the West Coast, um, so I'm doing this show early before I go off to court. Nigel Ados, yeah, this is an N95 mask. And then I'll talk about the coronavirus, just so you can kind of see it, the visual of it. So this is an N95 mask. You will put it over your ears, looped, and it would have a, um, actually ventilators here. And you can see the inside, which is replaceable. Um, I have replaceable sheets as well, um, but this is the way it actually looks. It is, it is very uncomfortable, I have to say. I mean, that's what kind of what made me get the other mask. And they talk about how uncomfortable it is in the article, and you don't know it till you actually put this thing on. I couldn't imagine having to wear this to say go shopping or anything like that. But if I had to, I would. Um, so, what is coronavirus, and what should I do if I have symptoms? Again, the Guardian, you can follow along. What is COVID nineteen? 
um, the illness that started in Wuhan. It is caused by a member of the coronavirus that has never been encountered before. Like other coronavirus, it comes from animals. I believe that somebody said it came from possibly bats or bat soup that they were drinking or something of the sort. Many of those initially affected either worked or frequently shopped in the Hunan seafood wholesale market in the center of the Chinese city. What are the symptoms this coronavirus causes? The virus can cause pneumonia. Those who have fallen ill are reported to suffer coughs, fevers, and breathing difficulties. In severe cases, there can be organ failure. As this is viral pneumonia, antibiotics are of no use. The antiviral drugs we have against flu will not work. Recovery depends on the strength of the immune system. Many of those who have died were already in poor health. So if you are someone that's taking care of somebody in poor health, I highly, I highly recommend that you start like really preparing yourself uh, to, to be able to not bring that into your home because, and I don't know if you can necessarily, but I, I just think that if you got somebody that's really old or has a low immune, you need to start making preparation plans of how you're gonna uh, inoculate your home and keep them safe because those are the most uh, prone people to actually have severe, Ill severe illness from COVID-19. Um, should I go to the doctor if I have a cough? In the UK, the medical advice is that if you have recently traveled from areas affected by the coronavirus, you should. ADOS checking in from Asia, specifically Okinawa, mainland Japan, Blissful One. Thank you for checking in. Um, I hope you guys are okay there, that are out there in Asia. Um, is the virus being transmitted from one person to another? China's National Health Commission has confirmed human to human transmissions and there have been such transmissions elsewhere. How many people have been affected? As of February 25th, the outbreak has affected 80,000 people globally. Now, don't slow down and think we have four, 4 billion people, so that's not like, I mean, we have billions of people. Um, I'm sorry, um, we have, I think, 8 billion people. But um, don't think that, that that means that somehow you're safe. And as a result, it's just 80,000 people. They're saying, and I read this in, in, in some accounts that they affect this, they, they expect this possibly might become the next flu. Um, this might become a pandemic in the sense that it might affect 70% of the globe by some accounts. And I think, and I think uh, what happens is, uh, what happens is that we tend to try to try to, in this Google era, be our own physicians, our own experts. I'm not saying not to use Google. I'm saying use Google to rely on the experts instead of actually trying to be an expert yourself. Um, you know, as of February 25th, the, the outbreak has affected 80,000 people globally. In mainland China, there has been there have been 2,663 deaths among 77,000 cases, mostly in the central province of Hubei. More than 12,000 people affected in China have already recovered. The coronavirus has spread to at least 30 other countries. The most badly affected include Japan, which we just had an ADOS people actually shout out from, uh, ADOS person shout out from, with 850 cases, including 691 from a cruise ship docked in Yokohama, and four deaths. Italy has recorded 229 cases and seven deaths, while South Korea has recorded 893 cases and eight deaths. You know, one of the reasons that I'm bringing this up is because this is the moment for you to actually um, get prepared. I'm going to talk about like grocery stores and how much stock they have. Generally speaking, most grocery stores only have two weeks of stock. So that means that they can run out of stuff very fast. And I'm not saying that that will happen and I'm hoping it's not. But if they do run out of everything from toilet tissue to paper towels to medicine, you don't want to be the person that's stuck without those things. If we do have a quarantine and you have to be home for a few days or even a week, you want to have those things in your home already and not be wishing for canned soup or for water, you know, I have gallons, I have eight or seven, nine gallons, and understand that these only last six months. I also have um, water that you can order for Amazon that lasts over 20 years. It comes in a, a small box. These are small ticket items. I'm talking $80, $90, and I know, again, we know that the, the that in LA, the only middle family is only worth $200 liquid. In Boston, the middle family is only worth eight uh, $8 liquid. In Miami, it's 11. So now it shows up the impact of not having several hundred dollars to actually be an American family. You know, when everything's running smooth, yeah, day to day, you have to struggle to get by. It really shows up when you have 
issues where you actually need to have reserves of things that cost several hundred dollars. And I'm telling you that you need these reserves of water. I mean, if you can't get the cases of water that are, you know, 80 or $90 to have a case of it in your home that lasts 20 years in these silver packets, then at least get these. These are, are, are 99 cents right now. You don't want to wait and then somehow they're either gone from the store or they go really high, three and four dollars, and you can't afford them anymore. Have them now and they at least last six months in those bottles. Um, we're having this discussion. Let me go over to the chat. Um, thank you, Tone, for the love. You continue to show ADOS. We absolutely love and appreciate you. Appreciate you as well, Janet Dixon. And Mr. Madhu, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. And, and you should be thinking this. Let's keep going on this article. So why is this worse than normal influenza and how worried are the experts? We don't know how dangerous the new coronavirus is. And we know we won't know until more data comes in. The mortality rate is around 2% in the epicenter of the outbreak, Hubei province, and less than that elsewhere. For comparison, seasonal flu typically has a mortality rate of 1% and is thought to cause about 400,000 deaths each year globally. SARS had a death rate of more than 10%. Um, the, you, know, you know, even from that, I, I think that we got to be, be clear that that death rate is averaged across all groups. There's another article here um, that you can, you can go read, and the title is Coronavirus Fatality Rates Vary Widely Depending on Age, Gender, and Medical History. Some patients fare much worse than others. Let me see if I have that pulled up so I can actually show it to you. Um, I'll try to pull it up, baby, on the final version. Um, again, corona. if you type this in, coronavirus fatality rates vary widely depending on age, gender, and medical history. As the coronavirus spreads, scientists are learning more about the disease's fatality rate. The medical journal JAMA released the paper. Again, I'm talking about reputable sources. This week, analyzing data from the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention on the 72,000 coronavirus cases in mainland China, uh, the figure as of February 11th, the largest such sample in, the stu in a study of this kind. The sample's overall fa case fat fatality rate was 2.3%, higher than World uh, Health Organization official officials' 0.7 rate. No deaths occurred, none, no deaths occurred in those aged 9 and younger. But cases in those aged 70 to 79 had an 8% fatality rate. And those aged 80 and older had a rate fatality rate of 14.8%. No deaths were reported among mild and severe cases. So that, that's why I say if you have like an a older boomer parent or you have an older boomer parent that likes to be sociable particularly, you need to inform them because they might not know that the fatality rate is that high for older people, and that's likely because of their lower immune system compared to um, when you're in your prime ages. Um, the fatality rate was 49% among critical cases and elevated among those with pre-existing conditions. 10.5% for people with cardiovascular disease, 7% for those with diabetes, 6% for chronic respiratory disease, 6% for hypertension, and 5% for cancer. The fa uh, so, so we're reading and we're learning and we're understanding that this is very serious. And I'm thinking that I need you to be the information hub for your family that might not be reading these articles because this can become a pandemic really quick where everybody is really concerned and you just don't have the items to be prepared. We're gonna go over again some of those items from the N95 mask to medicine itself. You know, this is Theraflu, you can take what you like. I know some people are prone to say, I don't take medicine, stock up on it even if you don't take it because you never know if your conditions get so bad that you really need it. This might be one of those moments where your normal habits have to change a bit. Um, I'm looking at, at this uh, next uh, thread. Shout out to uh, Kremlin, I believe, shared this thread. It's a powerful thread from a Dr. Dina Grayson. Um, again, here it is right here. I'll try to put in the final version. It's on Kremlin's page as well. Wish he bumpy could. Uh, Dr. Dina Grayson. Having years of experience developing, and this is a set of tweets I'm going to read to you that she talked about this coronavirus. We're talking about the coronavirus. You have nearly a thousand people. It's eight o'clock here in the West Coast, 11 o'clock on the East. We're having this discussion. Please use the super chat and share this video. If you don't share this video, it won't get around. People won't get informed. Also, support my channel on Patreon, Tone Talks. 
Um, Dr. Dina Grayson, having years of experience developing an Ebola treatment, I was concerned about the coronavirus outbreak from the outset because this coronavirus strain is very contagious, causes severe illness, and no treatment or vaccines are available. Unlike H5N1 bird flu or SARS, this coronavirus does appear to spread easily between people even after making the jump from an animal. This is not common. In addition to being highly cont contagious, this novel coronavirus can cause a severe infection that can kill even both even healthy people. It's rare to see both of these attributes in some novel virus. Usually it's one or the other. Usually it's one or the other. So usually it's either highly contagious or it can kill people at a high, like really kill people. Not usually both. And that's what's, what's, what's really scary about this uh, novel coronavirus virus. Understand that there's, uh, from the language I'm understanding, it's novel coronavirus and human coronavirus. Human coronavirus is something that Lysol talks about, the back of Lysol we'll talk about in a second, that's been around. Novel coronavirus instead is this new version that's highly contagious and has a, a, a very, very uh, severe infection possibility. Um, Dr. Dina Grayson continues and says, one way experts judge how deadly a pathogen is is by the case fatality rate, which is the number of, of deaths per, by, um, versus infected people. It's way too early to know what this is because it takes time for patients to succumb to the infection. Thus far, the case fatality rate appears to be 4%, but it's way too early to know what it really is. We just talked about what the numbers that are coming out and how it affects different groups. You know, diabetics, you're talking about a very high rate. I think it was 6%. You're talking about uh, older people, above 80. You're talking about 14%. Uh, and because patients are still sick and could die tomorrow, next week, even no, even new, new infections occur. Uh, per the CDC Gov, early on, many of the patients in the outbreak in Wuhan, China, reportedly has some link to a large seafood animal market, suggesting animal to person spread. So, you know, this is what we're looking at with this coronavirus. I've, uh, articles I'm going to keep going through. We need to get prepared and get serious. We need to get our items. We need to get uh, this here. I'm going to talk about it in a second. Is a is a actual flashlight and also a radio and a, and it doesn't use batteries it actually uses if i wind this for 30 seconds it'll charge it'll be used able to be used for 30 minutes you need to get one of these because you don't know if the power goes out and you need to be informed so and and they're relatively inexpensive i think 15 dollars so we're having this discussion about the coronavirus and these are things you you possibly should have anyway stocked in your home particularly again if you have a family with young ones and a wife or a husband you should be prepared with water and things that aren't, these are emergency kit items but far too often again people don't have these things and think that everything's going to be okay and then when they need them they're basically rushing out and putting themselves in danger to get the things that should be at their home already please again use the super chat share this video and also uh tell your people about this video because i'm going to keep going and inform people there's an article that came out, uh, Chinese doctors confirmed African blood genetic composition resists coronavirus after cured. And it was on a very, very sketchy website. Um, I, re I recommend that everybody uses reputable sources like the CDC, like uh, physicians. Um, the way that you can check if it's reputable is see if, if multiple, see if multiple sources are actually posting it. See, this is the, this is the article, it's on snopes.com. I never, uh, Again, uh, did Chinese doctors confirm African people are genetically resistant co to Corona? I don't want coronavirus. I don't want you running around here thinking that because you have black skin that you're safe somehow. Nothing has been proven to show that, but people are starting to share that. Don't be one of those people that shares that and then thinks that they're superhuman and catches this virus and as a result has a severe infection. Um, you know, there's an article that came out here um, Harvard scientists, hold on one second. There's an article that came out here. Harvard scientists predicts coronavirus will infect up to 70% of humanity. Again, um, you can uh, pick up that article if you like. Harvard University epi epidemiologist Mark Litch is predicting the coronavirus will ultimately not be containable and within a year, will infect somewhere between 40 and 70% of humanity. 
the Atlantic reports. But don't be too alarmed. Many of these people, Lich clarifies, won't have severe illness or even show symptoms at all, which is already the case for many people who have tested positive for the virus. That's precisely why he doesn't think the virus can be stopped. Viruses like SARS, MERS, and the avian flu were eventually contained in part because they were more intense and a higher fatality, fatality rate. In other words, if you were infected by the virus that caused SARS, chances were you weren't out and about. But because of the current coronavirus known as COVID-19 can be asymptomatic, or which means you can have it and just be normal, you can be out and not know that you're spreading the virus, and that makes this thing so dangerous. Um, again, let's have this discussion. It's so necessary. This is a discussion that all Americans, actually everyone in the world need to be having, but particularly all Americans need to be having amongst each other, amongst their community, amongst their family, and particularly with themselves, because we can't be complacent in this moment and not deal with the, with the, with the realities of what could come or, or how this is showing up, because now it's very real. You know, I, I, a month ago, I wasn't even going to do a show on it. Now, in the last few days, I was already preparing, but I wasn't, wasn't going to do a show on it until it, it showed signs. Because I don't like to actually create a scare or a panic. But now, as, as I'm hearing this kind of information about a 70% infection rate, I got to report and I got to tell you what I have. So in the hopes that I can help you, inform you, and show you how serious this is and get you going. Because I'm looking at Amazon and I, like, take for instance, it's weird because the mask, you know, and I'll talk about those in a second and what they do and what they don't do and the different kinds. They aren't basically, you, they're almost sold out on Amazon and they're charging like a dollar 25 a mask on Amazon. And what's weird is I went to the dollar store and they still had, at least had the little painter's mask, which served a similar function. These should be sold out. What that tells me is that people are not, you know, especially like lower end, like people who have low levels of wealth are not taking this very seriously because you can go get 12 of these for a dollar still at the dollar store. And I say to you, you might want to go get 12, 24, 36. I actually have 36. Um, the next article I want to read is an article that's titled Coronavirus Complacency is Worse Than Panic. Again, Coronavirus Complacency is Worse Than Panic. That's available on Yahoo. Please go read that. Um, please support this channel. Share this video. We're building into a discussion. I know it's early. This is about the coronavirus. We need to get serious about it. Um, let me see. Let me look over at the chat and read some. Infinite mind state. Survival prepping is all the cheap stuff great grandma or grandma had on deck year round. Black folk used to homestead. Look it up. Um, yeah, I, I know FY walking. Those aren't N95. You just came into the show. I have an N95 and I'm going to show it in a second. Thank you. Um, T. Otta, no, the masks are already sold out on Amazon. Um, and then and then there's some more people. Um, yeah, Generation Love, 100 milligram of vitamin B17. Thanks for the information. You know, there's some great people that are talking in there. Again, this is the N95, so I don't, you know, we're going to talk about that in a second. And this has the actual breather inside. So we'll talk about that. For today. I'm no expert, but at the same time, I, I know that. I looked it up and that's what they had. And then I have the replacement disc as well. Um, coronavirus complacency is worse than panic. This is the article I just shared. Again, go to uh, Yahoo and you can actually see that. And the recovery rate is high, but you're going to go through hell first. Sapien Queen. There's some great comments in the chat. And you might learn something in the chat that even I'm not sharing. I'm not a physician. But what I am is, is somebody who has a, a, a population of people who I, I feel I have a responsibility to talk to when something like this happens to inform while we still have a lot of power over our ability to feel comfortable as this as this goes over. Because I hope I, I, I believe that being in a first world nation uh, with the preparation tools we have, it will go over. In addition, from what I'm seeing about it, particularly for adults, it, it'll go over and children aren't even um, dying from it. I think they get sick. But at the same time, you don't want to be in a position where as it goes over, you have to go out for things that should be in your home already. Coronavirus complacency is worse than panic on Yahoo. What the, it starts off with just, an art, with just a chart that kind of shows like major grocery chains have only a few weeks of inventory on hand at one, uh, at one time. And Kroger, I know a lot of you 
they only have 28 days of inventory. So that means that they can sell out of stuff in a snap. In a snap. If COVID-19 turns into a global pandemic, as, as, look, as looks increasingly likely, this problem is going to crop up again and again. Doctors want to convey information that will help people limit their own risk and minimize the burden on health systems. At the same time, they worry that the very act of sharing information will encourage people to act as if they're in the grip of an emergency. Take canned goods. Many public health experts will recommend that people keep well-stocked food and medicine cupboards at the moment. In the event of a serious pandemic, that will mean you are not forced out of the house too often or left at the mercy of supply chains that may be damaged by illness in the workforce. One obvious reason for this is, is that it's not all that hard to clear out a supermarket. Grocery stores typically have no more than two to four weeks of inventory at hand at any one time, and much of that will be held offsite. If everyone buys sufficient supplies to see themselves through an extra few weeks, it's not unlikely that you or someone you, you follow on Facebook is going to find some empty shelves and take this as evidence that society's foundations are quaking. No public official wants to be accused of spreading alarm, but a major concern in the face of a novel pandemic, meaning a new pandemic infection, is both justified and salutary. The small behavioral ch challenges are changes that will be needed to reduce risk from COVID-19. More care over hand washing and touching, staying away from major public events in countries where disease is spreading won't come unless people are alert to the risk of infection. Actual panic is quite rare in these situations, said Julia Leesk, a professor of risk communication at the University of Sydney's nursing school. People are, are clearly very, very concerned, but a level of concern is in a way important for gaining good cooperation. And I, I really shout out everybody who's taking off time either from work or from uh, school or, or just um, jumping in this chat, especially on the West Coast because it's 8.15 in the morning. And I hope that after this show is over, you guys spread this message because so often what happens is we get caught up in the election or the debates or our day-to-day childcare that we don't really, really take serious something like this because we've heard it so often before with the bird flu and the like. But this is serious and this could ha spread really fast and you can look around, you don't have toilet tissue in your house. It don't seem like that, that's a big thing when you can go to the store. But when there's no toilet tissue at the store and you need some, it gets really serious. Or for that matter, you could not have eight to 10 of these in your house when these are dollar each right now. And that, those only last about six to eight months in the plastic. Uh, so you gotta swap those out if you have old ones. Um, again, please use the super chat, share this. Thank you so much, Marlon. I appreciate that you always support um, ADOS and I appreciate all the work you're doing. Uh, get alkaline water, Frida Thompson says. I say get any water, but if you if you need alkaline, then get that. Um, don't rely on the government, says Diane Scott. Remember Hurricane Katrina? Yeah, um, I mean, I would say get prepared to the level you can. We might, you never know if you have to rely on the government. I hope that doesn't come to pass. How to prepare for the coronavirus, another article here. Um, U.S. health officials warned on Tuesday that coronavirus is likely to spread in communities in the United States. They urged individuals to get themselves, their families ready. But what can you do? Infectious disease experts stress that people should not panic and offer practical advice. The mantra is keep calm and carry on, said Dr. Marguerite Neal, an infectious disease expert at Brown University. Stay home from work if you're sick. Wash your hands frequently, said Dr. Trish Pearl an infectious disease specialist at UT Southwestern. It's not super sexy, but it works, she said. With SARS, also a coronavirus, but one that is much deadlier, hand washing reduced the risk of transmission by 30 to 50%. So we'll go out and get the mask and get the, the medicine and get the water and then not wash our hands. I mean, I, I know it doesn't seem like, like, like much, but she said it reduces the risk of transmission by 30 to 50%. It would be sensible to have a good supply of food staples and necessary medicine. Don't wait until the last minute to refill your prescription. That's another one. If you have serious like diabetic prescriptions, asthmatic, asthmatic prescriptions that you need, Albatrol, make sure you're getting, you're telling your doctor that you need 60 to 90 days of it now. And if it, you know, I don't think it's too late now, but you need to jump on it today because the reality is you don't want to be in the home with, with a, a wheezing or or a diabetic need and you don't have medicine. And then we're talking about, you might not be able to get that medicine delivered for several months, not only because of not going to the doctor, but we're seeing supply chains throughout the world affected from coronavirus. 
I think some medicines are actually made in China. We'll talk about that in a second. And if yours is, then you don't know when you're going to get it because there, you know, the, many of the people are not reporting to work at the factories in China. Um, which brings me to another item that might happen. You know, our clothes, our TVs. Uh, you know, they're not telling us now. They all come from China. So if the factories are not up and people are staying home in China, the price of things may be affected. The hope is not. But if you need like uh, like shoes for your kid or anything like that, I would advise you maybe you know to go get those things. And I'm talking about immediate needs. They have a, like a shoe that you know is falling apart, and you're gonna wait until you know a few months from now to get it replaced. Go ahead and get a pair of shoes, possibly. You know, and I'm not telling you exactly that 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 you have to. But I'm saying you don't want to be caught in a position where shoes, the price of shoes goes up temporarily and you don't have those. Again, we're in the chat. We have almost a thousand people this early morning. Uh, Mika Wood says they are sold out in masks where I live for the last month. Had to buy some from Amazon. And Amazon is talking about, you know, it's funny because, again, I, I, what, what, there's a real interesting bubble, that mutation bubble socially that's happening. And I talked about this earlier. I'm going to repeat it one more time. Amazon, most of the masks are going for like $1.25 per mask, disposable mask like this, not even the N95, which is much more expensive. Um, what's so funny is I ordered replacements to the N95 almost a month ago. They still are not here, the, re the actual in inside sheet that I'll go over in a second. But I have the actual mask, and I could use this one for some time. But the actual disposables that I bought, what's funny is like on Amazon, they're $1.25, and I ordered some yesterday because i just wanted more of these after trying on the n95 mask and their delivery time was march 15. march 15 to march 20 or possibly into uh, april i canceled that order went to the dollar store and they actually did still have painter mask and uh, while these are not the best they're much better than probably free walking in the sense of just general blocking saliva and things of the sort i'll go over what the experts say about mask in a second but i'm saying for the dollar store to have, still have these shows you that people are not really getting prepared because these should be sold out. Maybe in your area, these aren't sold out either. Get prepared and get some masks if you can because dollar, a dollar a mask is insane as a price point, dollar fifty a mask. And then in addition to have to wait till the virus is in full spread possibly or, or worse, you know, that's something else. Um, that brings me to an article titled FDA Identified 20, 20 uh, drugs with shortage risk due to coronavirus outbreaks. This is my, my statement about what we see with uh, Albatrol, what we see with diabetic drugs in terms of you getting prepared. We don't know what the uh, supply chain is like or where they come from. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has contacted producers of about 20 drugs that either source all of their main ingredients from or are finished in China to gauge if they will face shortages due to the coronavirus outbreak. None of the companies reported that a shortage is expected for their drugs due to the outbreak. We have been in contact with those firms to understand if they face any drug shortages um, due to the outbreak, FDA. None of these firms have reported it. Uh, Kakoma did, did not identify any of the drugs of the companies. You know, uh, around 88% of the active pharmaceutical ingredients used in drugs for the U.S. market were manufactured overseas in 2018. You know, I'm not saying that that shortage is going to happen. You just want to be prepared, and I'm just saying... It's not much to tell your doctor you need a uh, you need a, a sixty day supply and get get ahead of the curve while it's still stocked at stores and then you'll just have extra. Um, again, we're in the chat having a discussion and we're gonna poker princess. We're gonna get into Lysol in a second. Thank you so much for adding that in the chat. I definitely understand that it's very you know it's it's questionable whether Lysol just kills the human coronavirus or the novel, which is the one we're talking about, which is COVID-19, novel coronavirus. But at the end of the day, it seems like it, it should, and that's what they're reporting. But it's not on the back of That's not what's on the back of Lysol uh, wipes. Um, Diane D, greedy eBay sellers are hoarding and selling 3M boxes of masks for $200 that are, that are $25 at Home Depot. Yeah, man. Lady D, stock up on... on Soap, medicine, because 80% of our drugs come from China. Also, shock, stock up on tissue. Tissue for blowing your nose. Get some of that. Um, Joseph Posey. I live in Seattle, Tacoma area. They shut a school down for um, approximately 90 minutes from where I live. Oh. Um, 
Midas Spade, if it doesn't happen, the pharma pharmacies will definitely manufacture a shortage. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, Mr. Madu said it gets in the eyes tone. Uh, black sand eye protection is important too. Um, I have some of that as well um, over um, in my kitchen. I thought I had it right here, um, but I have eye protection as well. Um, hopefully it doesn't come to that, but I definitely think masks are very important. But again, those are not fail safes. Uh, let me go through an actual article and you can actually follow, follow along on this article here. It's from NPR and face mask. What doctors say about their role in containing coronavirus. Um, again, these, are, so, but can a mask really keep you from catching the virus? To answer that, it helps to clarify which kind of mask we're talking about. Because experts don't know exactly how the virus is transmitted. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention is recommending that healthcare workers treat it like an airborne pathogen. Germs that can travel in particles or droplets in the air. That means healthcare workers interacting with coronavirus patients should wear a heavy duty mask called an N95 respirator. And an N95 respirator is very uncomfortable, you know. If I were to put this thing on, you would see it kind of goes like this and it breathes like that. And when you breathe, the disc actually moves in, in right here in and out. Um, essentially it has a inside flap that actually comes out and you can replace it. And also, uh, and, and also it loops around the ear here. This one I have, and not all of them are the same has Velcro on the back and the actual outside shell is, is reusable while this inside sheet you will replace every so often. Um, I'm not recommending you to go out and get one of these necessarily, but if you can get one, I would say get one. Um, they're hard to get right now. So these respirators are designed to fit tightly around the nose and mouth and then worn correctly block out 95% of airborne, 95% of small airborne particles according to this, to the uh, CDC. Again, this is like this. And you can actually, you, you feel the, the, the way that it's actually com compressed into your face. But wearing an N95 respirator is serious business says William Schaefer of Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Healthcare workers who use these respirators are required by law to undergo an annual fit test. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Alicia asked, I'm sorry. Alicia asked, how long does the mask, does the, uh, the uh, N95 last? I'm not exactly sure of, the, of how long before you have to replace the inside. I'm guessing a few wears, maybe, hopefully. Um, I wouldn't plan, I guess, personally, because I'm not going to be healing anybody or, or, or doing any medical care to wear it for anything other than to run to the store or if I had to, or to do something like, you know, I would hope I wouldn't have to go to work in the courthouse and wear that walking around the courthouse. It's very uncomfortable. Um, Juanita Murray uh, says children are dying from the flu, but there are no reports of death for the from COVID-19 of children under the age of nine, just so everybody knows. Um, Again, uh, FY Wiking said six hours of use. So, you know, if I'm not using it consistently for those six hours, because I'm in my car and I'm going to take it off, you know, hopefully I could be able to split that six hours if that's accurate. Uh, oh, for the cheap ones. Okay, that's for the, these. These are actually six hours of use. Yeah. Um, but wearing an N95 respirator is serious business is a back to the, to the article. Again, you can pick up this article. These are different articles that I found that are very helpful in informing you. Uh, this article is face mask, what doctors say, their role with the coronavirus. But wearing an N95 respirator is serious business, says Dr. William Schaefner of Vanderbilt University. Healthcare workers who use these respirators are required by law to undergo an animal fit, fit test to make sure the mask forms a tight seal on the wearer's face so that the contaminated air can't leak in. Although N95s are disposable, Workers must also demonstrate that they know how to put on and wear the model that they are using. The, this type of mask is difficult to wear because it's uncomfortable. And I, I, I'll attest to that. When you put this thing on, one more time, when you put this thing on like this, it is pressed onto your face 
and I can get used to it, but it is not all that comfortable for a day-to-day -day living or walking around. But if I had to, I could get used to it. Um, also, you have to learn how to replace the actual inside sheet because it, it's like complicated to like open and close it, but you can figure it out. And you have to order those sheets. And again, I ordered the sheets the same time as the mask. The mask has been with me for four weeks and I'm still waiting on the, on the inside sh sheets, like another eight sheets. To, that's how the delay is. And I ordered those almost six weeks ago, eight weeks, maybe six or seven weeks ago. Um, so th that type of mask is difficult to wear because it's uncomfortable. Schaffner says some people find it harder to breathe when wearing the N95, but that's the kind of protection that really works. And, and then, um, we go into by contrast sur surgical masks and these here are not surgical masks these here are, are common dust masks and we all know how these actually go you want to put them not only over your nose uh, over your mouth but over your nose and mouth and uh what these do is just block the particles from actually coming in by contrast surgical masks those cheap disposable gauzy masks that often come in blue or green are less uncomfortable when Schaffner says the scientific evidence that there might be a benefit for people in the uh, community wearing surgical face masks is very, very meager. The general sense is perhaps, but they're, the, they're certainly not an absolute protection. In other words, they do provide some benefit, but they're far from foolproof. Surgical masks are just a physical barrier that will protect you against a visible splash or spray or fluid or large droplets. So effectively, the difference between these two masks, from what I'm reading, is that whereas this mask literally blocks out air um that's airborne this mask really just will block out like if you're talking to someone and they just are, are whether the, whether it's droplets or actually like uh particles of air that are coming out of their mouth it won't just come into your nose or your mouth as a result of of them talking to you um in one study she um so but in one study she did find that family members who wore let me read the whole section. Explains Raina McIntyre, an infectious disease researcher and professor of global biosecurity at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, who has studied the efficacy of face masks. These masks fit loosely on the face around the edges, so they don't completely keep out germs and small airborne particles can still get through. McIntyre's research has shown that N95 respirators offer far superior protection. I just went over that. But in one study, she finds that family members who wore surgical masks when caring for a sick child at home had a lower risk of getting infected but the benefit only occurred if people wore the mask all the time when you're in the same room as the infected person I'm talking about the n95 mask mcintyre says something many families in the study found difficult to do like walking around and trying to wear this in your house like all the time if this goes pure airborne is almost impossible in terms of like how this presses up against your face now could you wear it for 15 to 30 minutes walking around a grocery store absolutely but it'd be real hard if this becomes airborne to wear this like as a permanent wear the way it's actually like structured i, I went over that um next thing is and i'm coming to to some of the end of the show can lysol and clorox products kill the corona the novel coronavirus the answer is complicated that's a cnn article i want everybody to be informed uh about this i want everybody so this is an article, and you can find this version that I'm about to read on CNN. Can Lysol and Clorox product kill the novel coronavirus? The answer is complicated. Lysol, Clorox, and a host of other household disinfectants widely tout their ability to kill 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses. The claim is right there on the label, including in that 99.9% .9 of human coronaviruses advertised on the back is a disease that products can disinfect from services along with two flu strains, E. coli and sal salmonella, uh, among others. Again, this is not human coronavirus, though. This is novel coronavirus. Please, uh, here are my goggles. Hopefully, it doesn't come to a point where I have to walk around, but you should have a pair of these anyway to protect your eyes. And we'll go over the items that I have. Um, that's uh, So now we're talking about whether Lysol and Clorox uh, kill the novel coron coronavirus. They're not altogether sure, but it, they're saying it's likely. And likely is better than not, than, than, than not because it does kill the human coronavirus. So the answer, it turns out, is complicated to the question of whether Lysol and Clorox kill the 
novel coronavirus COVID-19, the US EPA has some guidance. The disinfectants are thought to be effective against the novel coronavirus, but until tests confirm this, its ability to kill the novel coronavirus has been scientific has not been scientifically proven. While the risk of getting novel coronavirus in the US remains low, largely due to successful cont containment, a US Center for Disease Control and Prevention office warned Tuesday that the agent expect, agency expected to see community spread. You should have these wipes when you get on, if you're, if you're forced to get on an airplane because you already had a pl trip planned. Um, you know, I, I actually went to uh, Louisville and had one of those wipes and wiped down the, the actual tray table and also the, the part of the seat that was plastic that I could. As I understand it, novel coronavirus does not last long on actual items uh, as much as it is in human bodies. So, but I don't, I, I think that planes are an interesting thing because you're consistent or buses or trains because you're, it's not a, a long transition from one person to the next sitting down. But so you should be able to clean your own seat. The novel coronavirus is as the same as the name suggests new. The human coronavirus mentioned on the back of Lysol and Clorox wipes got people wondering, is the novel coronavirus all that new? Lysol wipes for cooling down desk when you're sick, potentially protective against the novel are potentially potentially protective against the novel coronavirus but human coronavirus in general are not new so so we're looking and labels on the lysol wipe containers mention human coronavirus as one of the viruses it disinfects under the epa guidance the wipes are thought to disinfect the novel coronavirus too uh, and under the epa's guidance for emerging viral pathogens since lysol and chloral and clorox and other disinfectants have been proven to effectively kill other human coronaviruses. Users can safely use the wipes and sprays to disinfect surfaces in areas where the novel coronavirus is suspected. So I would I would get some and have them uh, readily available to wipe down, uh, particularly places where, like if you're on a plane, that tray is a great example, or if you're on a bus and you have to grab a handle or anything like that uh, to the extent that you can. We're in the chat. We have almost a thousand people. Please use the super chat and share this video. We're talking about coronavirus. We're getting ourselves prepared. I'm gonna go over the items I have in a second. And, but before I do that, I wanna read a last two set of articles. Um, how the coronavirus, and this is this article here, how the corona from the USA Today could affect the products you see or don't see in stores. The coronavirus casts a widening shadow across the U.S. economy. The outbreak in China is dampening visits by Chinese tourists, raising the prospects of shortages and price increases for iPhones and other products and disrupting part deliveries for car makers. This is what I was saying earlier about children's clothes, shoes, uh, pots and pans. We may start to see shortages, and that's one of the interesting parts. So uh, what we're seeing is that is that the reality is that if we don't get prepared and start looking at the coronavirus as serious, we could get caught up in, in some of these shortages. The effects on the economy and commerce have been modest, but the toll is likely to grow if factories shut down in China persist and outbreaks continue to spread rapidly. Chinese authorities say numbers of new cases has dropped. Um, the number of coronavirus cases worldwide surged to nearly 75,000 under the most likely scenario, scenario I think it's a modest hit to the U.S. economy, says Mark Zandi. A big wild card is consumer fears will escalate and push households into a defensive mode that reduces their spending and in turn discourages business investment. Lost tourism represents the biggest threat. About 3 million Chinese people visit the USA each year. Um, so we're going to have less Chinese people. But in addition, this article goes into, and you can read this on your own, it goes into very heavily empty shore shelves, high, higher prices. I'm going to read some of that. About a quarter of Walmart's goods are made in China, according to financial services, UBS. The company is not having a problem with those shipments, but we don't know what's going to happen next. There are so many moving parts right now, says Doug McMillan, Walmart's president and CEO. And during the presentation on the chain's investment day, shipments typically slow in February because of the Lunar New Year when factories are shut down in China. Many U.S. retailers and manufacturers bulked up their inventories before the holidays, providing somewhat of a cushion. But the outbreak is causing production facilities to stay closed longer than usual. And major U.S. retail container ports are expected to see a sharper than usual drop this month, according to a report from the National Retail Federation and the maritime industry consulting firm Hackett Associates. 
U.S. retailers were already beginning to shift some source into other countries because of the trade war. But if shutdowns continue, we could see an impact on supply chains. Since commercial flights from China have been grounded, products that ship by air, such as computers, phones, and chips are, are, are arriving sporadically. Those delays are going to be exacerbated if production in China remains at a standstill, says Sakuti Gandhi, a partner at consulting firm Kearney. If retailers have to look elsewhere for merchandise or face limited supply, shoppers may have to pay more in late spring or early summer, says Neil Saunders. So that's what I was talking about earlier. That's what's going on. Um, that, you know, it's, uh, Donald Trump, President Donald Trump did an announcement yesterday, and he named none other than Mike Pence the uh, czar of the coronavirus. And I want to go over a, a Slate article that gives you some context of it. Let's revisit coronavirus czar Mike Pence's history on public health initiatives. Mike Pence is now in charge of the United States response to coronavirus. Donald Trump announced at a press conference Wednesday night, Mike Pence's qualifications per Trump include that he is a terrific in many ways, very good on health care, and really very expert at the field. Okay, and this is the article. Here are a few, few fact facts about Mike Pence and public health. When he was governor of Indiana, Mike Pence signed anti-abortion bills at a rate of two per year. Mike Pence has argued that sending kids to daycare stunts their emotional development. Mike Pence sure does not like Planned Parenthood, a health care provider. Mike Pence had to be told by an ER doctor at a restaurant about his own administration's proposed cuts to Medicare. Mike Pence hasn't repealed Ob Obamacare, but not for a lack of trying. It sure sounds like Mike Pence advocated for conversion therapy when he, therapy when he ran for Congress in 2000. He did not mean condoms. Frankly, condoms are very poor, poor protection against sexually transmitted diseases, said Mike Pence in 02. Mike Pence is not a doctor. Mike Pence is not a, is also not a scientist. So you have him being the czar and it doesn't really have expertise. And what you, as a result, should start to do is at least prepare yourself based on the articles I've shared with, with you, based on the conversations we've seen in the chat. Now, I want to go over some of the things that I personally have that you should have as well. Um, I start off with food preparation. Uh, so many people don't know that there are, are actual uh, cases of food. I'll pull up in the final version that lasts 25 years that you can sit in the corner of your, uh, of your closet or anything else just to have prepared. I recommend having 60 servings, 80 servings of this. Um, the way that you would actually heat those up would be this thing called an emergency stove. An emergency stove comes with uh, fuel tablets. And essentially, if the gas were to go out, you can use this to heat your food, uh, heat, heat, you know, small things so that you can be able to eat and survive. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is this. This is a flashlight and also a radio. The thing that makes it different is that it is not just battery powered. Now, in addition, I do recommend having a battery powered one and getting some batteries. But if you ever come to a point where you can't, where you can't get to batteries, you can use this one, and if you if you wind it for 30 seconds, it gives you 30 minutes of charge as a flashlight or and a radio. Um, the next thing I have is a solar a solar charger for for different devices, phone, anything like that. So essentially, I can charge my phone by setting this out in the sun and then get a charge on my phone. And it shows you how much charge you have. One, two, three, four. Here I have one. I haven't put it out in the sun. Um, the next thing I have are goggles. I think you should have a pair of these. Um, the water again, I have eight bottles of this. These only last in the plastic like six months. So make sure you swap them out so that you aren't drinking water that is, uh, unhealthy or dangerous. But in addition, um, I have these packets of water that you can buy on Amazon that last almost 20 years. Um, they're small packets and they're reserve packets in case you ever need water and the water isn't running or isn't healthy that runs out of the faucet. Mask. There's the N95 mask, which we went over before. I tried it on and showed you. You would put it on your face, over your ears, and then inside it has this uh, filter that you actually swap out. You have uh, the regular mask that essentially cover your nose and mouth from particles, spit, anything like that. If you have to go out and go to the store or go to work and go in public. Hopefully you at least have these for your home. Medicine, vitamin C tablets, thousand milligram. 
Uh, also, cold and flu medicine. Make sure you stock up on cold and flu medicine. Even if you don't take medicine regularly, have some just in case to help you get through. If, you, if these things get really bad symptomatically, um, let's have that discussion. Um, also, these are actually lights. You crack them and essentially they can light your house over the night. Make sure you have some of these in case the power goes out. That's pretty much the show. I wanted to talk about the coronavirus and we did. I want to make sure that everybody shares this video. Please use my Patreon and support this channel and this discussion, Tone Talks, T-O-N-E-T-A-L-K-S, or my Cash App, Tone Talks. Uh, share this video. Make sure your family watches it. If you do have people that are older in your home, make sure you get prepared because over 80, we're talking a 14% kill rate. Um, also, if you have diabetes or uh, uh, albatross where you have wheezing because you have asthma, you need to be really concerned and aware of this virus because it could impact and cause great issues for you. Uh, please, again, share this. Go to tonetalks.org to subscribe or donate. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's keep the discussion going and be safe out there.